Hi, everybody. Namaste. And um, thank you, Primla, for organizing this, um, you know, very timely and uh, needed session talking about COVID. And I think um, the thing I wanted to cover today is just some practical tips going forward on uh, what uh, managing your risk in a living with COVID world um, uh, should entail. You know, it seems, you know, when you talk to relatives, things have gone back to normal. I think it's very important to realise things haven't gone back to normal around the world. Uh, we've just been incredibly lucky. So now we have to learn, um, you know, to live alongside this virus and to live um, safely. So in order to do that, I just wanted to um, uh, show this very uh, nice um, diagram which is actually done by, you know, the great duos, Dr. Susie Wiles and um, Toby Morris. And this is a good way for you to think about um, managing your COVID risk um, moving forward, because basically um, there, there won't be anything um, that as such as zero risk. There'll always be a little bit of risk, but we can do a lot of things to, you know, reduce our risk of, um, you know, getting ill with this virus. So basically, we have the virus, which is, you know, um, COVID, which we all know about. And now that um, COVID is in the community, um, as Anshu mentioned, the main form of transmission of um, this virus is through aerosol spread. Aerosols are basically small particles, which, you know, look like this fine spray. And they are emitted when we just talk or breathe. So you don't have to cough or sneeze. That was the droplets. And that's what um, gave uh, the reasoning for the two metre distancing, because most of the large droplets, which we emit when we cough or sneeze, fall to the ground before that two metres. Now, with these aerosols, which, you know, we are emitting as we just you know, breathe, but they increase in volume if we are talking loudly or singing or there's more people. If we're all sitting in this, for example, enclosed room, these particles concentrate and um, increase in number. And it doesn't matter even if you're sitting on the other side of the room and wearing a mask, if you are there long enough and there is no windows opened to allow these particles to dissipate and get diluted by indoor um, by the introduction of fresh filtered or flowing outdoor air then what can happen is you can get an adequate viral dose um, that may lead to an infection now I saw that there was a question and somebody saying what is the risk once I'm you know double vaccinated of actually getting sick with COVID that's actually a very good question because I think it's probably causing a lot of confusion now not many vaccines basically have a sterilizing immunity meaning that you um, can't catch the infection at all once you've um, been immunised. Although the vaccines are, are very good at protecting you from having to get very sick with this virus or go to hospital, um, they're not 100% in terms of protecting you from getting the virus. In terms of numbers, compared to an unvaccinated person, you're about eight times less likely to actually get um, infected if you are double vaccinated compared to an unvaccinated person. And you're 25 times less likely um, to have to go to hospital or to die from this infection. So, um, you know, getting your uh, both vaccinations um, as soon as possible is the most important thing. There was another question there about well, now that we're double vaccinated, why can't we just think of it as the common cold? Unfortunately, COVID is, um, is not just like the flu. Um, one in three people who do get COVID do go on to having long COVID, which is persistent symptoms um, that can continue on for more than three weeks. And, you know, and some people who got infected last year are still suffering from symptoms. And unfortunately, even if you're vaccinated and you get a breakthrough infection, you can still um, go on to getting, um, you know, long COVID later, um, much less likely. But that is why even though we are vaccinated, we still need to take precautions. So back on my diagram here, so we have the virus, we know that it's um, spread uh, through aerosols and that's why we need to be very careful about wearing well-fitted masks and um, ventilation. Then, um, so in this triangle, basically the virus is trying to infect the host, which is us. Now, Anshu touched on this very well. In terms of protecting ourselves, I think the most important thing, as I said, is um, getting vaccinated if you're eligible to do so. So if you are over the age of 12 uh, and you've got children, 
the more the biggest protection you can um, provide to family members that aren't eligible to get vaccinated is that every family member who is eligible gets vaccinated um, as soon as possible because this will reduce your chance of trans transmitting it. We've, we've seen cases where, um, you know, they've announced at the meetings that, you know, as somebody in the household got infected, but, you know, two members that were vaccinated didn't get infected. So getting vaccinated will help protect um, the members of the family that cannot be vaccinated. Now, I think probably um, uh, both Marianne and Anshu spoke about um, our own personal health, and that is number one priority. I mean, and basically I can put it down to you need to make sure that you're eating well, and that means eating a, you know, a diet that's rich, rich in fresh vegetables of all the different colours of the rainbow and fruit, drinking adequate water, avoiding alcohol and avoiding smoking. Um, that's very important. Secondly, you need to sleep well. Because we've been in you know, a lot of work from home, people are sleeping late or they're their routines are out of whack. It is very important that you're getting, you know, you're trying to get as close to at least eight hours sleep a night and you're trying to maintain some sort of routine because sleep is very important for your immunity. Um, then you need to make sure that you are staying connected with your loved ones and that you are staying calm. And it's also important that you are exercising. So exercise, you know, it can be just, you know, going for a walk, doing yoga, um, you know, getting out, getting your heart rate up. It's very important. The other thing which Anshu mentioned, um, which is very important, is avoiding vitamin D deficiency, um, particularly in the Indian community. There are very high rates. Uh, and in generally in New Zealand, um, you know, uh, vitamin D is made uh, through, um, uh, you know, exposure to the sun, but it has to be the UVB rays. And when you wear sunscreen, for example, that blocks those rays and dark skin takes longer to absorb vitamin D. So it is very important that you talk to your GP and you make sure that you are not vitamin D deficient because people who were vitamin D deficient had a poorer outcome with this infection. So um, that's in terms of you know, and, and making sure that any chronic illnesses that you have, you are taking your medications and you are managing them and you are keeping in touch your annual screenings, any other vaccines that are due, like whether you're due for your shingles vaccine, it's important. Why is it important? Because you could get a co-infection. You could get shingles plus COVID and you don't want to do that. So just like in the, you know, in the... Um, a northern hemisphere where it's heading to winter, they are trying to get people to get their booster um, COVID dose and the flu vaccine at the same time. So we're lucky. Uh, one of the really lucky things is we're heading into the summer months. So um, as the vaccination rates are getting up, um, you know, we uh, at least are not contending with, you know, the big RSV and flu outbreak we had um, during the winter. Now, the third one, which I want to spend a little bit of time talking about is our environment. Now, why is this important? So the environment now, it, it's in terms of where you expose yourself um, to where there is COVID. And um, once you understand about this whole, you know, aerosol spread of all these particles, then you understand how you can manage your risk. Um, so why is that important? Well, it's important because um, if you go unmasked, to a crowded concert, for example, um, where there might not be people who are vaccinated. Now, we're lucky because when we go to the traffic light system um, in public uh, you know, arenas, I think they will be mandating that people that are vaccinated should be there. But that's because if you take lots of these viral particles into your system, that would correlate well, first of all, if you're fully vaccinated, you would need a lot more viral particles to be taken in to lead on to an infection. But um, if you have a big viral dose, then your infection could be worse than somebody who had um, limited their time in these risky areas and wore a very well-fitted mask. And that would correlate with um, a less severe infection because each uh, that, you know, you are limiting the amount of viral particles that can then, you know, enter your cells and start replicating further. So I think that's a very important concept for people to understand, you do have quite a few things in your control, if you understand. So in, in addition to, you know, um, getting vaccinated and looking after your general immunity, the other big thing that you need to be looking at and investing in 
right now is um, very good masks and understanding how to wear them. Um, recently, my children went back to school. They're both um, senior kids, so they had to do exams. So, you know, uh, when I suddenly realised I was um, online ordering very good masks um, for them, uh, knowing that there was quite a bit of risk and I was looking for comfort um, and something that they could be comfortable in all day long. Um, now, your, your usual mask, uh, which most people have, is a disposable mask. Now, it's very important. I still see people coming, patients coming, and they don't know. Um, they have a coloured side and a white side. The coloured side, which is often blue, is the waterproof side, and that belongs on the outside, okay? And it has a wire bit. That's the top because it moulds to your nose, okay? And... Um, Basically, the mask has to cover your nose and your mouth. Now, these sort of disposable surgical masks, they were mainly designed to protect others from your droplet. Um, so not so much um, the aerosols, which are very small particles. But if you're, um, you know, worried, for example, you need to take a flight, you know, you need to go and visit a relative, um, uh, you know, um, then I would invest in a um, KN95 mask, which is available online. Um, you can get them in boxes or um, even a KF94. I think they're a Korean-made mask. And these are effective in blocking about 95% um, percent or more of those little aerosol particles. And they, you know, have a inbuilt wire and they basically have this sort of shape. So this is something that, you know, you should look to because, you know, if I'm to go shopping, um, and everybody's at Sylvia Park, I'm going to make sure my mask is really good and I'm going to try and um, limit it. Another uh, piece of equipment that if you'll start seeing a little bit more of is this thing called a CO2 monitor, which mine just arrived today. Now, CO2 is what we emit when we, um, you know, uh, when we exhale, so carbon dioxide. And so these monitors um, measure how much carbon dioxide there is in a room. So if you can imagine, it it can be used as a proxy of thinking how much of exhaled breath and viral particles are in the room. Now, an ideal um, in a COVID world is that the indoor CO2 reading should be less than 800. Now, mine has just ticked over, so probably I need to open the window. Um, and, and these, you know, a lot of, if you've got a business, you know, you can start looking online for one of these because it, it basically tells you that, you know, gives you an indication of when you need to open the windows or doors and get outdoor air coming in. Another very useful device that you should start looking into if you do have a business or you are really worried um, is a air purifier, a HEPA filter. You can get a standalone um, HEPA filter and they um, are effective in... Um, filtering 99.97% of small uh, viral particles out of a room. They won't affect your CO2 reading, um, but they are another, uh, you know, thing added, uh, you know, uh, thing you can get um, if you're really anxious. And, and these are the sort of things that we need to start thinking about. Before, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was all about, you know, cleaning your hands, sanitise your hands. Now you really have to start thinking about the sanitising the air or being very aware of shared air. And if you are later to be having guests at home, it's important that you ventilate your house well before they come, after they arrive, and when they're there. In fact, the NHS in the UK, because it's winter, has just launched a campaign where they've actually made an ad showing how these viral particles um, accumulate in a room. They've visualised it. And they've told people that even though it's cold, even for 10 minutes every hour, if you open the windows and allow air in, that will significantly reduce the risk of transmission of these um, COVID aerosols. So, um, yeah, I guess... Um, um, and the other thing is the mask should be well fitted. So there's no point getting like an N95 mask with um, gaping holes. I mean, um, if you, I mean, today I picked up a, a mask from uh, Look Smart, um, Look Sharp for $5. And it had, I mean, it wasn't this one, but it had a, a wire and it went over the chin, under the chin. And it also had a pocket like this. Now, um, in these pockets, you can insert a, a disposable mask inside, which will, you know, which will be very effective. Um, and, you know, in a community setting, even these masks, um, Consumer NZ came out with the fact that you can actually um, hot wash them without soap um, and reuse them, you know, um, 
uh, five to 10 times, depending on how soiled they are. So, you know, we've sort of got to think about the environment as well and practicality and economy. Um, you know, obviously, so my kids have been going to school every day. They're trained now. They uh, wash it as soon as they get home. And make sure you teach your children properly. Like I've told my children, only eat if you're eating outdoors. Um, you know, outdoors is much lower risk. Um, and, you know, when we take our mask off um, to eat, that's when we're, you know, increasing our risk. So the other things that can help, um, you know, if you're concerned is when you come home, um, you just do a quick salt water uh, mouth rinse and even just a salt water nasal spray and even just a little brush of your tongue. And that will just help any reduce any, you know, inhaled viral load. Um, uh, that you might have taken in. And it's a simple thing, um, you know, even a betadine, um, you know, mouth rinse um, or a dental um, antiseptic, like you've probably seen if you've been to the dentist, they've been getting it to rinse with, you know, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide mouth rinse to just kill, you know, any viral particles. And, you know, these are really simple things. Um, uh, I think, you know, we should feel uh, quite hopeful, but I think we should be realistic. Um, life is going to look different but that's okay because there's lots of good news on the horizon just in the last week we've had um you know merck come out with um uh, their um, potential antiviral then the next day pfizer announcing theirs and then new zealand's purchased another one so um, there are a lot of agents, um, there are a lot more, there is a lot more hope. I mean, we really are the lucky country because we've waited and we've watched. Um, and now it's up to each individual to protect themselves. We can't expect that, you know, the government's going to be looking over us all the time. These simple things like having a pulse oximeter at home, um, although um, I will point out with the COVID management at home um, that is being set up, uh, you know, um, at the moment, um, people will be getting delivered a pulse oximeter if they fall into a high risk category. But, you know, it's something that will help ease your anxiety and will be useful. So, um, yeah, just stay informed. And if, you, you know, you are feeling anxious, feel free, you're welcome to uh, follow me on my social media where I post a lot of the latest information and try and really keep it simple um, so people can access and understand the developments as they're happening. Thank you so much, Sandhya. We all know there's so much, so much, so much that we can talk about. And for me to get you to try to do it in a capsule form is so difficult, but I appreciate what you've delivered. Thank Absol you. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much.